Hello, stickers. Uh, my name is Seold, and I'm the Bank Solution Architect. And many enterprise companies are now considering using OpenStack to manage their legacy environments with pet applications. And in this session, uh, we would like to share our experience making this uh, reality in Sberbank. For that purpose, uh, me and my colleagues, Ivan from Mirantis and Fyodor from ITK, will give you a brief overview of project objectives, how it influenced on architectural decision, and how we deploy it. Uh, first of all, I will briefly outline what is actually Sberbank is and say a few words about project background. Sberbank is the largest bank in Central and Eastern Europe and number 102 in Forbes' uh, top 2000 biggest public companies list. We have millions of customers and a lot of branches across many countries and uh, more than 300,000 uh, em employers and more than 10,000 uh, developers working in bank now. That's why we have a complex IT infrastructure and many applications supported our business. Uh, almost all application, sorry. Uh, almost all applications uh, provided by ISVs or developed in-house has a complex multi-type topology. And, uh, I'm sorry for this. And in this slide, you can see an example of such application. Uh, different component for this application may run different platforms and different software, uh, system software. For example, a database server usually runs on RISC server, and application server usually runs Linux on x86 platform. So that's why uh, deployment of test or development environment for such application takes quite a long time, involves many people, and is error prone. Uh, but now our business requires reduced time to market for new products and now more than ever. So that's why we set up the following business goal for our project is reducing time to deploy such complex applications, to automate the whole process of deployment for applications, uh, enabling self-service portal for users uh, with common IT services, uh, provide uh, detailed billing and reporting for used capacities, and increase efficiency by organizing dynamic IT infrastructure in bank. Our target service model for cloud is based on central service catalog, uh, which is consists from complex services, and complex services are built uh, from basic services, and end user may order complex or basic service from service catalog via one click from self-service portal, or issuing a command from a command line. And service catalog is always up to date and populated with supported applications. Uh, whole project started from examining of existing cloud solutions that were this time on this market, and six different cloud, st uh, cloud stacks were tested on a Sberbank site, and OpenStack was selected as a platform for our target cloud architecture solution. The next step was to <coughs> Sorry for this, I have no idea why it's happening now. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> the next step was to deploy a few uh, basic cloud regions with basic OpenStack functionality and collect the detailed requirements for our target cloud architecture. And uh, then we start to design our uh, architecture for cloud solution and deployment. Uh, all described requirements led us to complex uh, multi-region uh, architecture for our target cloud solution. And that's, uh, this architecture is not supported from out of the box for OpenStack distributions. And that's why we start design our target architecture cloud, so, uh, to, our target cloud architecture with our partners. Now I ask Ivan to d describe in details uh, the architectural solutions. Uh, thanks, Eva. Uh, I'm Ivan, a cloud solution architect in Mirantis, responsible for this deployment architecture. And now I will tell you how we design this solution. On this slide, uh, you can see the overall high-level diagram of the entire solution. It's quite complex. It consists of multiple layers, multiple components. So uh, now we'll take a closer look into its main components, how it's actually built. Sorry, we have some technical issues over here. The very first decision uh, which defined the whole uh, solution architecture was the under-cloud or a cloud approach here. Our target environment is heterogeneous and consists of uh, many different platforms. On the other hand, uh, we face some strict boundaries set by uh, project time frame and uh, available resources. 
And so we decided to use layered architecture here with stable and static undercloud, uh, which holds multiple isolated uh, control planes of individual overclouds. It allowed us to quickly deploy uh, the basement layer and can currently work in multiple streams uh, on multiple overclouds with different networking storage and compute models while isolating uh, thanks, uh, all the possible deployment and operational issues. Sorry. We have some uh, background noise. I'm sorry for that. We are still dealing with just technical issues. Just give us a minute to deal with them. So, okay. Okay, thanks. Next slide, please. Group switch slide. Yeah. But uh, in this case, uh, we still needed uh, to provide cloud users uh, with, uh, in, with common transport user experience. There's also several over clouds. So the second decision was to put all the common services uh, like uh, the Keystone authorization backend, like Horizon Portal, and common repositories into separate services, uh, shared services under cloud tenant. To support the layered uh, Sberbank organizational structure and comply with the project requirements, uh, we're using the main feature of Keystone version 3 here and custom role model with uh, several uh, Microsoft Active Directory authentication backends. Uh, highly available uh, repositories of Glance images and Murano packages are also located in this shared undercloud tenant. Now let's take a look uh, into specific OpenStack regions architecture. The most widely adopted platform for KVM, uh, for OpenStack is obviously KVM. Uh, we also realized that Hyper-V architecture uh, for OpenStack integration also looks quite similar, so designed it quite the same way. In Sberbank network, uh, each rack is isolated into separate layer three segment, and this boundary influenced networking design for all the regions here. Both for KVM and Hyper-V, uh, networking is based on OpenV switch and overlay of XLAN networks. Uh, which I announced externally using OSPF protocol. Several Cinder backends uh, for KVM we use Ceph and EMC Venix are used depending on the business requirements. So a subset of KVM uh, compute nodes is also equipped with fiber channel uh, host bus adapters. Ceph is also used for object storage here and has a multi-tiered application uh, with dedicated SSD pool for high performance workloads. Ferro will tell about this deeper in, in his section. Uh, Hyper-V uses Microsoft's software-defined storage solution introduced in Windows Server 2016 and is set up quite similarly. As Sberbank also needed to provide their uh, end users with file share as a service, in KVM region, uh, we are also using generic uh, Manila plugin for that purpose in KVM. The next region we wanted to highlight is VMware. Its architecture is obviously quite different. The obvious difference is to then to be integrated with VMware vCenter instead of individual compute hosts. Uh, it gives us some extra benefits, such as the ability to use advanced vSphere features, uh, DRS, uh, VMware HA, but provides less visibility into individual hypervisor hosts uh, from OpenStack perspective. As overlay networks in VMware environment uh, are not supported on OpenStack yet, unless we use some third-party uh, SDN controller like VMware N6 or others. So uh, in this solution, we are using VLAN networking with modular layer to uh, DBS plugin instead. The HTTP agents are also placed on individual E6i host here. Uh, as OpenStack managed controllers are uh, located in KVM-based undercloud, uh, and in Mitaka release, it didn't support uh, VLAN trunking. Uh, it seems to be fixed in Newton, but we need to investigate the case further. Maybe we'll adapt to this feature in the later release. As Bearbug also needs to provide their customers with bare metal hosts, Ironic was also designed and deployed here. Ironic architecture is pretty much generic pixie boot mechanism, and we faced some restrictions and its current implementation. Uh, S-ironic uh, controllers and compute nodes are located in isolated layer three segments. Uh, we set up DHCP relay relays on the networking equipment to allow Pixie boot and multiple regs. 
Uh, next, Ironic in Michaka doesn't, uh, didn't support a trans network isolation, which is against Sberbank security policies. Uh, so we had to design separate uh, Ironic environments, separate regions for, for these isolated security zones. Uh, this issue is announced to be fixed uh, in Newton. Uh, still, uh, we have two limitations still present. Uh, neither uh, port warning nor uh, cinder volumes are supported by community so far. Uh, so we are still unable to provide the customer with uh, redundant ironic networking and persistent volumes for the bare metal hosts. Now let's take a deep look into risky regions, which are obviously most tricky ones. Uh, we'll start with the IBM power integration here. Until recently, uh, there weren't any acceptable means to manage IBM power hosts from OpenStack in the same way that we do with, with XHSX ones. The only way to do that was using uh, IBM Power VC distribution, which is quite limited. It doesn't uh, include Heat or Murano, which we use extensively uh, in this deployment. So uh, it was an issue until uh, the situation changed a year ago when IBM released a tool uh, to manage power, uh, uh, IBM Power virtualization called NovaLink. Uh, it uh, supports power hosts starting from Power H series and allows us to manage these hosts uh, in a similar way that x86 ones from nearly, nearly every OpenStack distribution. Essentially, uh, it's Ubuntu-based uh, logical partition on, the, on your power server acting as a compute node. It contains some Python framework uh, <coughs> to manage power, uh, IBM Power Virtualization technology uh, and uh, Nova Neutron and Salometer wrappers. It still has some limitations. Uh, not all the Cinder backends are supported so far. Our is also not supported, but it's a huge step uh, forward and uh, we utilize the technology in this deployment. And finally, let's take a look at Oracle Spark architecture, which is uh, the newest one still has some work in progress. The most recent uh, officially, re officially released Oracle OpenStack distribution for Spark is still Kilo based and uses proprietary Oracle EVS networking stack, uh, which restricts its integration capability for our project and uh, it, it uh, <clears throat> forced us to change the, the uh, architecture significantly. So we started to discuss with the Oracle team how can we overcome that and how can we deal with it. We managed to deal with this issue finally uh, by enrolling to Solaris 12 a beta program. It allowed us to test uh, the next version of OpenStack Solaris for Spark, which is still to be released next year. It's uh, Mitaka and Open Switch based. So now we can integrate these uh, Oracle hosts in the same way that we do with, with x86. So the uh, entire infrastructure architecture looks quite similar uh, for um, all the infrastructure backgrounds. For these capabilities are still being tested by our engineering teams with Oracle support. So, uh, so far we made the journey on the archi uh, infrastructure architecture, but uh, Sberbank's ultimate goal is uh, to provide their customers, their end users, developers and testers, not with individual hosts, but with application stacks, like one several showed us before. Uh, Murano engine, which resides in every, in every single region here, is the key to open up these capabilities for this project. Murano is essentially the engine which allows us not only to deploy like, like Heat, for instance, or, but to manage the whole life cycle of these complex multi-tiered applications, uh, providing end users with app catalog, and a uh, convenient way to order, set up, reconfigure, and clean up entire business applications. In order to support that, uh, Murano is based on uh, object-oriented class model, allowing administrator, uh, administrator to declare uh, the dependencies between entities and model complex multi-tiered applications. On this slide, you can see the uh, classes hierarchy implemented so far, which in, uh, in, in includes a uh, common infrastructure library, basic operation system classes for Windows and for Red Hat, Sberbank uh, applications like uh, Oracle Database uh, and IBM WebSphere, uh, and application clusters like uh, WebSphere Cell. Some of these tiered applications are cross-platform. 
uh, the most common use case is to deploy databases on risk-based servers. This substructure should also be reflected in UI, allowing specific platform administrators to track resources used by these uh, application deployments. Uh, to support this case, uh, we enhanced Murano with advanced multi-region capabilities using Murano plugin model. It allows uh, end users to order a multi-tier replication from the parent environment, and all the needed child environments are being automatically deployed in, in specific regions, uh, where actual resources are allocated and can be tracked by cloud administrators. Now, uh, let me finish the solution architecture overview and further our deployment team lead. I will tell you a bit more uh, about how the solution was actually deployed. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clicker. Uh, hi, I'm Fedor and I'm lead of the deployment team for this project. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview how we did this deployment uh, from its beginning to production. To simplify, unify, and uh, speed up the deployment, it was decided to use Fuel as a deployment automation tool. Uh, you can hear a lot of about Fuel uh, at the next door, but uh, I just want to say that it was uh, really useful for our project and highlight a few things about. Uh, Fuel is a deployment tool that has option to provision a hardware server, install operating system, and configure OpenStack. Fuel 9 has new cool post-deployment capabilities, uh, so now we can install and upgrade additional features on existing OpenStack environments using hot pluggable plugins. That uh, plugins we get from community or create a new one as we did for this project. Uh, for this project, we had uh, eight different regions of OpenStack, one for under cloud and seven for over clouds. And uh, it's really hard to install them manually. If you must know that if you did that. Uh, in fact, we could use one fuel installation to deploy all those regions, but after all architecture sessions, we decided not to do that. Now each installation has a different feature set, plugins, and their versions. It can even have different versions of Fuel and different versions of OpenStack. And of course, we can deploy and redeploy them at any time. Uh, for this project, we have a nice solution that uh, helps us uh, in rebuilding a set of repositories, images, and packages. So when we upgrade and install a new region from scratch, we get uh, all required packages and images from the place that uh, is close to the install, not from the internet. Uh, for this project, we do not touch uh, O containers, so every region begins with uh, server provisioning that we do via PXC bot. Uh, early for successful uh, deployment via PXC, we should use a dedicated PXC interface uh, for the PXC boot. No bonds, no links aggregation at all. And if you had just two 10 gigabits interfaces per server, it's really wasteful to use uh, one of them that way. And we tried and succeeded uh, using uh, such networked feature as uh, link aggregation control protocol fallback or standalone mode. It really depends uh, how uh, switch vendor called them. Uh, we tried uh, and verified this technology for Cisco, Huawei, and Arista switches, and now everyone is happy. We do not need to <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we do not need to search over the storage for additional uh, network card, and network team does not need to buy additional gigabit switch or SFP modules, and we can utilize uh, all performance of the bonded interface, balancing traffic between them. Also for this project, we used uh, additional storage, which is provided via fiber channel loons, of course, with multipassing. After successful hardware provision, uh, we install OpenStack uh, with uh, pre-configured roles. There are such roles as controllers and computes uh, in default fuel installation, but uh, for this project, we needed to consolidate them, and it's possible not only in dev stack, also in production. Uh, we, it was required for us to detach some roles uh, that uh, were used for, uh, uh, 
we needed to detach uh, Keystone because uh, we need dedicated Keystone service for centralized point of authentication where each region can access uh, centralized Keystone again and get a token. Uh, we have a uh, very customized Horizon installation, uh, so it can be detached, upgraded uh, at any time, leaving other regions intact. Uh, using plugins, we can uh, minimize additional configuration that required to set up environment. Also, we can uh, not just do pre-deployment customization, uh, as for example, attaching to external Keystone. We can also do hot pluggable post deployment customizations and install custom OpenStack packages on uh, already working installation. Uh, for this project, we have a really nice solution with modified L3 agent for dynamic routing using uh, Quagga software router for Linux. So now uh, all tenant route networks are dynamically routable and we don't need to use floating for them, floating IP addresses. Uh, because uh, we have uh, customizable templates for Quagga for this plugin, we can uh, do any networking, uh, we can configure any routing protocol that uh, your hardware supports. For this project, we use OSPF, but we can use BGP or any kind of uh, routing protocols that Quagga supports. Uh, not only node roles are affected uh, using plugins. Uh, for this project, we created a plugin that can uh, create uh, different uh, CEF pools and different uh, Cinder backends from the box. And now for this project, we have, uh, out, we have uh, multiple CEF uh, tires like high speed uh, storage on SSD disks and low speed storage, just common speed storage with uh, generic hard disk drives and SSD cache. And uh, users uh, and administrators can have them from the box. Also, we upgraded the EMC VNX storage plugin to support Foil 9 and uh, added capability to use uh, external fiber channel storage. Um, so now we created runbooks for all deployments from QVM to HyperV. So each deployment can be easily managed, repeated, or recreated in the next data center. Plugins uh, really help a lot us with that. They do, they do a lot of customization that we had to do manually earlier. Automation helps us to reduce misconfiguration code and speed up the deployment. Uh, on this slide, you can see today's uh, state uh, of uh, all regions and all deployments uh, that we made. We already finished with uh, under cloud, shared services, and QVM regions, uh, testing and successfully tested functionality of basic monitoring and basic Mirena applications. We have deployed and testing uh, such regions as Ironic, VMware, and IBM Power, and uh, we are still in progress and with plans to finish uh, till the end of this year for the regions like Oracle and Hyper-V, providing extended functionality like complex marine application, advanced monitoring, and UI, UI enhancements. Uh, now I pass in my clicker to Seva, and he will tell you a bit more about organizational aspects of this project. Thank you, Fyodor. Uh, so on this slide, you can see a whole project timeline. And because of limited time, we uh, run multiple streams in parallel. And on a daily basis, we organize Scrum meetings for our teams and between team leaders. And on a weekly basis, we organize uh, retrospective sessions. The main results we expect to have uh, by the end of this year, where now a target cloud solution must, must go to the production and uh, host uh, m most uh, uh, development and uh, testing environments for our developers. To make it doable, we organize a few more work groups for this project, this PMO and uh, Global Architect Group actually responsible for whole project strategy and uh, governance. And of course, all architectural solutions are designed and approved by these groups. And uh, development is split into four groups. It's a UI uh, development group, uh, Morana application developer group, OpenStack cloud region deployment group, and documentation development group. And from uh, Sberbank side, we also organize two more groups. It's a development group, it's a new business unit. We're actually responsible for third-line support and integrating our cloud solution 
uh, to existing bank infrastructure, and operational group who uh, consists from highly skilled engineers from different technical departments and responsible for first and second line support and whole uh, cloud maintenance. Our development team uh, has additional responsibilities to communicate with the community and provide most valuable results to community. Uh, uh, as uh, our uh, dev team lead, Dmitry Plaha, who also here in this room promised me, we will provide most valuable uh, results to community and we also have an example of uh, committed uh, bug from our side and we will share, uh, of course, code reviews and blueprints uh, with most valuable functionality for us. Uh, the other development results will stay in-house uh, because uh, they are more relevant to this UI changes and integration part. And uh, actually we are finished with our slides and now we want to show you a, a quick and nice demo of our target cloud solution and how it looks like to the end user. Just a few few seconds. It's a Muslim pun. Sberbank Cloud, powered by Mirantis OpenStack, allows you to easily manage heterogeneous infrastructure. Now, your teams can provision virtual resources on different platforms in a few seconds. Sberbank Cloud provides user experience similar to well-known Amazon Web Services. You've got full control over resources, service topology, and key metrics like utilization and service health. Also, you've got catalog of basic and multi-layer applications, available on demand and ready to be deployed in a few minutes. That allows your agile teams to speed up decision-making, product development and delivery. Sberbank Cloud is the key to enable new service lifecycle model. So, uh, actually, uh, we are finished. And uh, thank you for your attention. And we are waiting for your questions now. So, please. Hi, uh, thank you for the, the opportunity. Uh, I always heard uh, people asking for me, uh, how is the relation of the future of cloud and the old um, good legacy mainframe stuffs? And uh, you from a bank, um, I don't know, do you use, do you have this uh, legacy infrastructure in your in your cloud, and if you do, uh, how do you integrate? And do you have plans to integrate or move things from the old mainframe platform to to the cloud? Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, of course we have uh, vision uh, for our future architecture, and uh, uh, many applications are now developed on uh, Linux x86 x platforms, but we still have all, all legacy applications, and I say about this that we need to support them, need to develop uh, them. Uh, so it's much more efficient for us to automate the process of deployment of existing applications than just to move all stuff to x86 now. Hello, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, regarding those, uh, let's say, legacy platforms like uh, Solaris or, or existing VMware, uh, did you build or do you plan to build the new infrastructure for VMware and you will, you will in the future deploy application on top of it or will you be able to, to migrate existing VMware infrastructure under the cloud management? 
Okay, so now we have uh, three hypervisors. It's VMware, uh, Hyper-V, and KVM in our environment. And uh, uh, for now, we use all three of them. And uh, of course, in future, we may use uh, maybe uh, KVM mostly, or maybe, no, VMware. Uh, but uh, uh, our target cloud architecture must consist of three regions. And uh, uh, in case if we have efficiency, uh, business efficiency for using, for example, most KVMs, we will mi migrate our loads to KVM. Uh, it's about uh, efficiency only. But uh, functionality of our type cloud solution must consist of all three regions. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, and one question about uh, plugin that you make with uh, OSPF and Quagga for uh, virtual routers. Uh, is it packet like uh, Neutron, Neutron plugin? Is it already open source? Or it's still in-house development? In, if it, it is uh, in-house development, will it be open sourced in near future? Uh, I can answer that uh, it's in-house, it's in development. Uh, it's uh, like package, we just replace uh, L3 agent with a new one that we created. And uh, about its uh, open source uh, release procedure, I think uh, it's a uh, question for the Sberg Bank, uh, if you know or not, don't know, will, do we have plans for releasing it? For now, actually, we have no such plans, but uh, if its functionality is valuable for community, we uh, we cons con considering about uh, sharing it to community, of course. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, guys. Do you already run some, do you process some production data on apps running on OpenStack or just plan to? No, actually, for, we use uh, our cloud now for only for development and test environment, and we have a, a few pilot uh, cloud region, as I uh, told in the beginning of this presentation, which already support more than uh, 100 projects and uh, provide uh, test and development environments for these projects. So there are some real customers who already use it, right? Yeah, we have okay. a really And second question about con containerization. Do you guys consider looking into it? Uh, so now we test in Docker in our cloud, and we have already uh, our development team already have them run application for Docker's. Uh, regarding you know using Docker's for uh, uh, as a main uh, virtualization technology, we have no answer for this question now. But maybe in the future we will use Docker's mostly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention.